Hi, I am Lisa Eisenberg from the University of Tübingen and I am presenting our work on predicting critical events after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is basically a transplantation of the immune system where the patient's own immune system is first destroyed and then stem cells from a healthy donor are transferred to the patient to replace it. This is an effective treatment for many diseases like leukemia or lymphoma, but it can also lead to life-threatening complications. For example, the transplanted immune system can attack healthy cells of the recipient. This is called graft-versus-host disease. Or if the transplanted immune system is not strong enough, the patient can have virus infections. Different complications require very different actions from the clinicians. For example, graft versus host disease would call for a stronger suppression of the immune system, but this could be dramatically wrong if the patient is actually fighting CMV. In the setting, machine learning models could be really helpful because if a model can predict an impending complication some time before it happens, it could alert clinicians to critical patients and support them in making treatment decisions. In our project, we have retrospective data from a bit more than 1,700 patients treated with allogenic HSCT. This is general data on the patient and donor, like for example, age or sex at time of HSCT, and some information on the main diagnosis and treatment before transportation. In addition, we have laboratory and virological measurements at multiple time points per patient, these are, for example, blood cell counts, C-reactive proteins, CMV test results, and so on. So we have a combination of numerical and categorical variables and a combination of constant and temporal data. Our goal was to use this data to train models that can, at any prediction day T after transplantation, predict whether a critical event will occur in some fixed interval after day T. We considered two critical events for the start. The first one is death, and the second is the first occurrence of CMV viremia. For this, we considered every time point a single sample, and as input data, we used the current state of the 35 most frequently measured lab values and concatenated it with the constant patient and donor data. Then our output is a binary indicator of probability that an event occurs in the time between days T and T plus X. Our model type is a simple L2 regularized logistic regression that we trained with five false stratified cross validation. We also tried other more complex model types. You can find some references on the poster, but none of them gave better results than this. Then we varied the length X of our prediction interval to see in which time frame predictions are possible. So let me show you some results. First for the survival model. On the x-axis, you can see the length x of our prediction interval. And on the top, we're showing the area under the receiver operating characteristic and the precision recall curve. And these two measures have very different trends here, which is in part because we have a strong class imbalance in our data set. And this class imbalance changes with the length of the prediction interval. You can see this on the bottom of the plot. If we have larger prediction intervals, we label more samples before each event as positive, and that leads to a larger positive fraction. To account for this, we reran the analysis while subsampling the majority class to achieve a constant positive fraction. If we do this, we get the results that are shown in the center. So here, both performance measures have the same trend. And what you can see is that if we keep the positive fraction fixed, then it seems that for short prediction intervals, the difference between positive and negative samples is more pronounced. But on the other hand, and for short prediction intervals, our class imbalance is much more severe, which makes the problem very hard and strongly affects AUPRC. We analyzed the results of the survival model a bit more closely by looking at the error rates as a function of the day of the sample relative to the event. We did this for fixed prediction interval length 21 days and a probability threshold that was set to achieve 80% recall. In this analysis, we included only patients who actually had an event at some point because otherwise there is no day relative to the event. If we do this, then all samples up to 21 days before the event have the true label positive and we can look at the false negative rate. This is the upper plot. 
and as you can see, the model makes most mistakes far away from the event. One day before, it recognizes the samples quite easily as positives, but 21 days before, it's not so sure. We can do the same thing for the time more than 21 days before the event. Here, all true labels are negative, and we can look at the false positive rate. And again, we can see that the false positive rate increases as we come close to the event. So it shows that a prediction of a positive label becomes more likely as we move closer to the event. And it shows that most mistakes are made around this boundary between positive and negative labels that is 21 days before the event. This is the same plot as before. Now for the model predicting CMV viremia. And again, you can see that the IOPRC is strongly affected by the strong class imbalance for short prediction intervals, but this time for subsampling, the trend does not inverse. So here, there is no real advantage in choosing a short prediction interval. In conclusion, our models show promising first results. For example, for a prediction interval with length 21 days, we get an AU rock of 0.9 and AOPRC of 0.48 for survival prediction and slightly less for prediction of CMV viremia. To the best of our knowledge, these are the first models that do not only offer a single score for risk assessment once before HSCT, but actually reassess the risk dynamically over the course of treatment. We know that we have a severe class imbalance in our data set and that this varies with X. And future work in our project will focus on integrating more data and we will prospectively validate our results. So thank you very much for listening and please let me know if